You can see it. If you're looking at the mic now, you know. Your boy is running the board doing it solo today. All right, we'll see how bad I screw this up. But in the interim, we got a lot to get to, and it's been a, a busy weekend and a fun one at that. What's up, Tommy? How are you? I'm good. I'm proud of you. Running the board today. It's an impressive feat. We're one for one in the segments. So uh, looking good in that chair. I know you sit there anyway for headlines on Tuesdays, but uh, nicely executed. Well, it was it was a couple of buttons to start. Now, let's just see when I screw this up later, you guys are going to have to be patient with me. But this is going to be on again, off again, the norm here. We were talking about all the stuff that we've been working on lately, and I can still see all you guys in the chat, and I can see Tom. We're all good to go. Just a different chair for me, uh, not unlike when we're doing headlines, but I have to control all the, all the stuff here for now. And so if this gets a little hairy, You'll you'll understand why you'll 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 see where where I'm at. Hey, by the way, I do want to I want to say, uh, congrats to Lottie Wode. Right? How cool was that? Was that? I know you watched it. You had to have. Um, that is the Florida State uh, golfer who who won at Augusta, uh, the the amateur uh, women's national championship. How cool! I mean, that was really really cool. Uh, a thing to watch, a thing to behold, a thing to celebrate as Knowles. We're gonna have her on this week. In fact, I reached out uh, to Amy Bond, the head coach at Florida State, and she was kind enough to get back to me and said that Lottie is busy right now and, and getting back from Augusta is exhausted, did a million interviews, but she'd be happy to work one in locally here for the Jeff Cameron Show. And so uh, there you go. Good time. So we'll have her on the air uh, this week. I'm going to interview her tomorrow. That was always something the ANWA that that it's the first fifth year that they've done it, but it's always something that I've watched closely, whether a Florida state golfer was there or not. It's the course. And and I love that the, the idea that you're having an amateur championship at Augusta national, but I just, I've always found that riveting because the back nine at Augusta, it's, it tells its own story and anything can happen on the back nine at Augusta. It's just nice to see. I've, we've had a couple of close calls, but it's nice to see that an old wins it. And it was during a very busy time on Saturday in which baseball kept on playing and playing and playing to the 11th inning. And then football scrimmage was happening as well. But uh, I had three televisions going and, and the third feed was the ANWA back nine. A couple of things cleared up. And then by the time you get to around 14, 15, Lottie's two back at that time. Uh, it was on the full screen. And then she did it, man. Hold some serious putts. It was very, very cool to see. You know, it's it's funny in talk, and I wanted to lead with that and at least acknowledge it. And it's an amazing accomplishment. And if you think about the history of Augusta, she wouldn't have even been on that course uh, prior to the last few years. And and you know, uh, we we understand how singular that place was and prejudice it was for for a very long time. So you you keep the perspective, the historical perspective in mind, and recognize uh, how cool it is that that's changed, but also that here we have a Noel out here winning this event. And I can only imagine how nervous you'd be. I I think just the specter of playing at Augusta National. We know the legend of Augusta National. We know all of the competing aspects of that, but also we know the course itself is a character. The course itself is is larger than life. Uh, the only other place that's true is probably, now listen, there are great golf courses all over the world. We understand that, and many of them have had significant histories, but like other than St. Andrews, right? Wouldn't you only say St. Andrews? I mean, there are a lot of places that they play the open championship, but St. Andrews is the one where you're like, ah, oh, it's birthplace of golf. This is different. It feels different. This, the course is a character. Augusta national is that they move the U S open all around. They move the PGA championship all around. Great courses, lots of great courses. Augusta nationals, Augusta national. It's the same place every year. And it looks different than any other course in the world. And it is breathtaking. I think that if I were ever afforded the opportunity to play it, and I know some people who have, I've gone to Augusta obviously, but I never played it that I would be overwhelmed by the course. Hell, I was over. I've played uh, over in Ponte Vedra twice uh, at the, you know, the players is, is, it's an amazing place. It's a fun to, to, you know, you go over there and you play the first time I played it. I kept thinking about all the shots I've seen from the best players in these certain situations. I really couldn't even play my ball. I was too busy being distracted by the history of the place. I can't imagine what it would be like, uh, go into Augusta and then having to compete. Now, again, these these are elite world class golfers who are on full rides to go play college golf. They've played a ton of it. They've been in competition. They're really probably not overwhelmed by the idea of hitting a golf shot ever. That's where hacks like us come into play. But man, that place is so pristine. And then you have to, you know, you have to obviously execute shots. And then you know the history and you know what's on the line. 
I would be I'd, I'd be a crumpled mess. Well, horses for courses. She played well last year uh, at Augusta the first time around. She made the cut, was able to play on Saturday. Uh, Lottie's wanted um, uh, Carnoustie. Uh, mm-hmm. She's wanted Baltus Roll. <laughs> she's barely 20 years old, and she's won at Augusta, Carnoustie, and Baltus Roll. Not bad. And, uh, you know, still in college as an underclassman, uh, she's going to get an, a couple more cracks at this. But you, horses for courses, she said in, in an extended interview afterwards, well, actually, of, of the three rounds I played last year, the best one was here at Augusta National. So that, that would make twice. Two for two when you're in a tournament <laughs> setting at Augusta to birdie three of the last four. And really, she had a good look for birdie at 16 as well. That's just It's really cool to see, and it gets you jazzed because we all know on Thursday we'll be talking on the air live just like this. I'll be down in Tallahassee. But we'll be talking to each other with one eye on what the hell's going on at Augusta to make sure that uh, Thursday is as competitive as I think it's going to be. It's going to be a fun week there at uh, Augusta National. This Friday is the Jeff Cameron Show War Chant uh, Invitational. We get all started. I call it the Invitational. <laughs> it's just a charity golf tournament, and uh, people sign up. It's not really an Invitational. But anyhow, it's awesome, and we have fun every year. And It'll be this Friday at Capital City Country Club, and I can't wait. Um, you know, we're able to work with our friends at the Second Harvest and have a good time and raise money for a good cause. And uh, the course should be beautiful. Looking forward to that. Friday will be uh, a no-show day. We'll just be out there playing golf, just so you know. Uh, Let's get to the football. Let's let's talk about what happened in Florida State scrimmage because everywhere I've checked, and then from the lips of the head coach himself, uh, it sounds like the offense took a step forward compared to the previous scrimmage. That stands to reason. It makes a lot of sense that that would be the case. Uh, I'm pleased that that was the case because you want to hear about progress from your quarterback. In particular, I want to hear about progress this year, in my mind. I want to hear about progress from our wide receivers. And when the receiving core took a hit last week, when we found out that Destin Hill was hurt, I began to get a little concerned. It's not that they don't have other options. It's not that there aren't guys that you're depending on besides Destin Hill to go out and have a good year and take a big step forward in year two of being in the program. Uh, Obviously, Hakeem Williams is a bigger name, frankly, than Destin Hill, who fits the bill, right? Same scenario. Guys who got into games last year, showed a spark every now and again, are expected to step up and be a big-time player this year. But Destin was having a great camp. And when you're looking to kind of look at which of the receivers were emerging to help their quarterback, the new quarterback, learning an offense? Destin was the answer to that question. There were other guys doing well, but Destin was kind of the guy so far in this camp that you thought, oh, man, this is going to work out well. This is going to be a beautiful marriage. we got a guy emerging in year two who's figured it out and starting to really kind of uh, showcase his abilities and, and, and look like a, a, a real big-time player and a quarterback is learning the offense and people that he can trust, this is going to be great. And then that guy goes down to injury. You go, oh, good Lord, man. You know, you get nervous. You get you get frustrated. So when I hear about the fact that uh, you ended up having three or four candidates uh, in this scrimmage that you could turn to and say, hey, those guys were more dependable. Those guys took advantage of opportunities. Those guys showcased their skill set in a way that stood out to our head coach and Mike Norvell. That makes me feel better. That was the thing that I took away from Coach Norvell's comments was that it was a day that was further owned by DJU and a day where the receivers stepped up to help in that process. Yeah, just from his tone, and I was doing the board updates on, on Warchant, and so I was kind of playing stenographer as he was talking. His tone sounded like somebody who would say, I saw what I needed to see. I'm glad I saw what happened. You know, like... These things have have conspired in a way. The timing is good. The quarterback play is good. I was a little concerned, but I saw what I needed to see today because the receiving core has had stretches during practice in which the ball is on the ground too often. So how are they going to respond? Is it in there, or do we have a problem on our hands? No, everything is much better, looks cleaner. DJ owned the moment, made some big throws. He said Malik Benson had his best day. There were explosive plays from everybody in the receiving core from the top all the way down, he mentioned Camden Fryer towards the end of his uh, talk as well. He said the tight ends weren't as weren't as much a part of the scrimmage as they were the first time around, but they still made explosive plays. Um, he cited uh, Brian Courtney as somebody who made some big plays, uh, and Landon Thomas. He said he's coming along really fast, so it just it did sound like 
there were no shortage of places to go on offense to say this guy had a successful day. That guy had a successful day. It's good to hear, frankly, because even though the defense should be ahead, the defense has fewer variables to work with. The offense has a lot of variables, and it sounds like maybe some guys are trying to take those jobs, those starting jobs. I was um, excited to hear about Brian Courtney. I got to admit, as a guy that was a proponent that he switched to linebacker and kind of predicted it might happen, then he did switch to linebacker, and I was able to puff out my chest a little bit. I always liked him as a tight end as well, but he was undersized, right? He wasn't a guy that you thought could really sustain blocks. I'm not sure any of those guys other than Morlock have a chance to really be plus blockers from the tight end position. Like I, I don't know that we, ha- I don't think Landon is in year one. He's got certainly the body type that tells you in time he can, but not in year one. And I'm still not sure Courtney can and Jackson West. I can't trust to be on the field. He's got an injury history. We'll see. He's, he's had moments where he's looked pretty good in camp. Uh, this has been his best camp, by the way. I, w- I would say that. So it, it's great to hear that Courtney uh, made some some plays at, at tight end. I just I wonder if he can block. I wonder really at that position who who you're gonna you know rely on to to block for you in the run game. Probably it'll change the way the nature of your run game. I, I, I'll put it that way. I think I think they're gonna go about the process a little bit differently this year. I would tend to agree. It, it's just it's a matter of you know. Do you like to roll out there an extra offensive lineman? Do you go in the portal to go get you an inline tight end? Uh, well, and how successful are you going to be a guard to begin with? Uh, are you going to be better at the base stuff that you want to do this year versus last year? And if they are, if they are more successful in using the base stuff, then it, it changes the dynamic of what you can call formationally, what they're going to look like. That, that's the number one thing I'm looking forward to seeing in the fall, generally speaking, is just when you're talking about formations, and you're talking about personnel usage, how many receivers you have on the field, how many tight ends you have on the field. What do we look like? Because this could look drastically different. I mean, Jordan Travis was at the helm for two and a half years. So this could look drastically different. Mike Norvell does a very good job of scheming around how his quarterback is built, the strengths of the team, the two deep, all that stuff. What's our base look like? I'm sure it'll be out of the gun, but do we run more something else in terms of tight end usage? Do we go four wide and spread it out? It'll be fun to see. Baseball keeps it rolling. That is a four and one week for baseball. And you think back to, uh, you know, where they were going into the week with a five game week. And and we talked about how would the arms play because uh, you were a little worried without lighter uh, that you were going to have a whole bunch of that bullpen have to come you know, to the party it, more than you would have liked. And they have, and they have, and they've played well and they win the series in bitter conditions uh, up in Boston. Uh, if you watched any of those games as I did, it looked miserable. It looked miserable every day they were there. They seemed a little sluggish offensively for a stretch, but then they would come alive and their pitchers gave them a chance to be in those games, to win those games. And they take two of three. And once again, Tibbs with a big day yesterday as he's a guy that, you know, five RBIs and had, have you ever seen, it's rare that you see anyhow. I mean, I've been thinking about it. I've seen it at Hauser some because of the way that fence juts up where you'll have guys pepper the top of that wall in a game or a weekend series, Uh, but not in a normal fence where you just have the yellow line like they do at BC, which extends out up into a hill, right? And how in the world does Tibbs hit the top of that twice? That was nuts. He's got to be like son of a, Um, but he does. And he hit the tippy top of that for the second one. Uh, it ended up being, um, you know, a double that brought in everybody. And he has five. Hours. He's just a fun hitter to watch because he'll go the other way with two strikes. And, and he still can go the other way with power on a weekend where they were able to kind of bottle up Cam Smith. I thought he got screwed on a couple of balls that were way outside that were called strike three. Mm. Um, that that's tough. That's college baseball and uh, umpiring. It happens, but, but I really see the maturity of a, of a James Tibbs who we're working to have on this week as well. So it's a big week for baseball. If you think about it, you got Florida coming in tomorrow. That is going to be an amazing atmosphere at Hauser and a chance to sweep Florida, by the way, Florida coming off of having been swept this weekend by Missouri, including in a game yesterday that we watched where they were up 10, eight in the ninth. What a shame. What a shame to see him get walked off in that situation. But they get swept in SEC play there. Obviously, they'll be a little ornery as they make their way here, trying to avoid the season sweep at the hands of Florida State. But it's a cool week when you're playing as well as Florida State is, and you got a game against Florida that's nationally televised tomorrow. 
followed by a weekend series against arch rival Miami, who also got their ass swept over the weekend by Duke. Here we go, college baseball. Things are lining up nice. Uh, this is a big week, and but you could see why we had Coach Posey, Michael Posey, on on Friday's show, and he was concerned, and he said it's not ideal to have the issue with Cam Leiter that they do. They're assessing him again today. That was what Coach Posey told us. But that you kind of, you have a five game week, and then you have another short and compressed week because the Miami series starts Thursday night. Yeah. So yeah. you know you're looking at. I, I think if they could have yesterday in an effort for the sweep, let's say they win Saturday in extra innings, they win that game in 10 or 11. I think it, you'd almost go with anonymity, you know, as, as your pitchers on the mound, like younger kids straight up, get, you know, just cutting their teeth. We'll see what happens way down the depth chart, so to speak. But in a one, one series, you got to go finish the job there. And Dorsey gave you five. Oxford gave you more than three. Pitch How back about Oxford days. getting out of the bases loaded situation, Tom? And that was huge. Well, so my point on this is Joe Charles picked a, a pitch in back to back days. You don't have a ton of options available to you tomorrow against Florida. So this is from the pitching staff standpoint. You know, I, I think Andrew Armstrong might be the starter, should be only pitched one inning on Saturday, but like him and Rowan, Brady Lauk, maybe they start Lauk again. You don't have your full complement because you were more taxed on the weekend without having one of your starters. So it'll be interesting to see what arms they use tomorrow. There's adversity that comes with that. And then Miami rolls to town two days later. So from the pitching staff standpoint, you got the job done this weekend. Giant challenge ahead for FSU against their two rivals Tuesday and then Thursday through Saturday. It just reminds me how fun it is to go over to Hauser, though, in weeks like this. This is going to be huge. I look forward to it. Uh, we got more football to talk about. We got the National Championship of Basketball tonight. It's Masters Week as well. This is going to be one of those fun weeks. Obviously, I'm giddy about the golf tournament and the ability to go out and play a little golf this week with you guys. This will be fun. Jeff Cameron Show continues. 93.3 Real Talk Radio. War Power Mill Training Academy equips motivated athletes focused on baseball and softball with the specific tools to reach their true potential. Now, you'll read that if you go to their website, but I'm here to tell you that, look, whether it's your daughter wanting to play softball, your son wants to play baseball, or maybe they just want to have fun and get the most out of their abilities, and that's where Power Mill comes into play. They've got coaches and camps that teach for every level of play for your son or your daughter. To learn more, go to PowerMillSports.com. This is Jay of Paul Summit and Pest Control. There are many companies out there selling pest treatment programs at prices which seem too good to be true. Like most things, you get what you pay for. Let's separate the fact from the fiction. Fiction. The price these companies offer includes all visits needed to keep a home pest free. Fact. Their prices only include regular visits for exterior treatments. If you encounter pests inside your home, these companies will charge you for additional visits. Is that really pest prevention? At Paul's Termite and Pest Control, we always apply exterior treatments, but our plan includes a significant difference. Whenever you encounter an interior problem, Paul's technicians are there, usually the same day you call, and there is no extra charge. With ProShield, you'll never pay extra for providing the service we promised. Press prevention for your home, and we'll be there as many times as needed to honor our commitment with no extra charge. Paul's Termite and Pest Control is a local company that proudly served the Tallahassee area for over 50 years. For the elimination of termites and any other pests, call Paul's. We'll get them all. And we make lawns greener, too. Honey, I'm home. We're in here, honey. So why are all my friends here? Have a seat, Dave. We need to talk about your problem. Problem? I don't have a problem. Dave, you do have a problem. A problem with your grill. Here's some pamphlets from Hearth and Patio. They are waiting for your call to help you upgrade your grill. If you or someone you know needs a grilling intervention, call Hearth and Patio today at 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. Or hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Zaxby's has been perfecting chicken fingers for 30 years. So what now? Now we go to the sea. Introducing the Southern Fried Shrimp Meal with butterfly shrimp that's perfectly golden fried. A perfect blend of cocktail sauce and Zax sauce that we call Zach's Tail Sauce. Plus perfectly seasoned crinkle fries, perfectly buttery Texas toast, and even a drink with perfectly pebbled ice. Here's to 30 more years of perfect. The new Southern Fried Shrimp Meal at Zaxby's. Woo, saucy. Zaxby's. The weather is unpredictable and can cause issues around your home. Weston Treywick provides commercial, residential, and industrial electrical wiring services, yearly inspections on fire alarms, portable generator sales. Attention, Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Leak, a law firm dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. 
If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Leica Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen Leica Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLeakaLawFirm.com. Heisen Leica Law Firm, your advocate in times of need. Friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Look at your boy. Look at your boy. Just like that, huh? And you're there, Tom. I can see you. All right? You're, you're good to go. You can hear yeah, me. Yeah, I wasn't saying anything. I was just making sure that, you know. I don't want to step on toes. I don't want to, I don't want to call a Grand Slam in Gainesville. Uh, and step on anybody's toes. <laughs> you know, it, it's for for my uh, friends and family out there listening to the uh, to the show today for any point, or or just in passing. You you can't text your boy for another week or two while I'm doing the show. Like in the past, you could text me during commercial breaks and be like, "Hey man, quick heads up!" Or I'm wondering about this. I got like 25 texts while I'm doing the show right now. I'm like, "No, no, I can't talk to you. I got time for that. I'm doing." I'm doing involved radio. There's a lot of stuff going on here, man. Things have changed. New things have come to light. It's Wolfman Jeff on the mic. Yeah, you, that's uh, you're you're in the chair. It's it's a weird little deal, isn't it? All these little buttons and doohickeys. Well, I you go back to when I began radio. I was in the chair, and I would have to signal lots of things at back at the old place. But it's been a minute. It's been a minute since I had to do all of that. I. Uh, once I got into the, the 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 host chair, I found a way to make sure I never sat back down in any sort of production chair. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Because Lee used to have me fill the breaks. He used to have me do everything. I had to set the logs. I had to do it all. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I want somebody else to have to do this moving forward. And then I made everybody else do it afterward. <laughs> I don't want to do all this. That's true. And you know what? For 15 years, this is uh, now 15. I'm, I'm almost like Danny, you know, turning into that Golden Chief booster for 20 odd years. Uh, but 15 years ago is when Millar first let me sit in that chair. You and it was, keys. it was extremely rude the first time he did. He said, go ahead, sit in the chair. Have you been watching what I'm doing? And I was like, I don't know, maybe. He goes, well, we'll find out. Coming back from break. And like you're trying to do a, pro a professional radio show. And here he is throwing a little snot nosed 21 year old in a situation I had. Didn't really do well. <laughs> He's a uh, throw you into the deep end of the pool kind of teacher. And I know that served you well eventually, but it is kind of cruel and unusual. I've watched him do it over the years with everybody that came through. And I would think that doesn't seem cool, man. You're just making this guy figure this out on the fly. Uh, that's nuts. Uh, but it worked for you and it's going to work for me and we're going to be good. So far, so good. Now, more scrimmage talk in this sense. Uh, again, guys, you realize we're not able to watch the scrimmage. We are very dependent on what Mike Norvell has to say about who stood out, who played well, who didn't. But also, we're dependent on uh, you know sources and and you know they're, they're, you can get you can extract extrapolate some information here and there from people uh, about what stood out. But you know, I'm not surprised that we've even seen from their video. Lucas turning the corner and getting the sideline on a play, right? I don't know that I have been at a practice yet this this spring where that didn't happen. I mean, he 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 has done that in every practice. It's kind of the surprise of camp. You know, I don't if we were going to designate who's the surprise of camp right now, I don't think there's a better candidate. It has to be him. It it, it has to be. He's just look, 
you're, we're talking about Jalen Lucas, who's the special teams expert that came over from Indiana. And, you know, we saw the highlight reels uh, from Indiana. You can go online and find all that, the, the big plays that he made in special teams. I think he was like, at one point, Big Ten player of the week because he had a return for a touch on another long return. And they ran a highlight reel of that. And that's about all the tape that I basically could say that I saw just game footage and, and, and return footage from, from Indiana's games this season. So I knew he was fast. I think everybody knew he was fast and you thought, all right, well, great. You know, we got better on special teams last year. This guy will help us be better on special teams. But I don't know that we thought that you'd be getting a guy that I expect to see play. Um, you you gotta be careful how you word it, uh, kind of a key role, but I, I, I think so, Tom, I think, I don't know. Again, I, I got to be careful how I word it, but I, I just think he's going to get in and be part of the action in every game they play this year beyond special teams. I think so, too. And and look, every little detail about how the program messages and, and does things matters. And so when FSU social media, when Florida State football social media is putting out a video of Jalen Lucas making a play, it's an endorsement of not just who he is, you know, like a, as a football player. They like him. They like him. And they think he deserves praise. And they think, as a coach, it's probably very annoying. But some kids recently in this program that might not be here anymore cared very much how much they made Florida State social media. Like every little detail like this matters to a kid. It signals where they are in position battles and, and how much the coaching staff likes them. And in some cases, it's true. When they decide to put Kentron Poitier, for example, I think that's a choice. Kid makes a good play. They want to praise him. They want to make sure that he understands that he could be very, very important for this receiver room. When you put a Jalen Lucas touchdown, that tells me that they're not afraid that the media hype that we're talking about him a lot is too much. They, they like the kid, too. They agree. He's been very impressive, and he's earned it. The angle doesn't show you just how fast he moves because the camera is sitting in the end zone. And he's running towards you. It's a great, cool little shot. But wait till you see this guy in person, everybody. Like, I can't wait for the spring game in 12 days, the showcase, I should say. They're going to have a play or two for Jalen where you can understand just how quick this kid is, and it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, it's, what Tom's describing here is is a good point in that uh, the way that things are run at FSU for the football program, there's nothing that's not accounted for. Mike Norvell is thorough. Nothing if not thorough, right? He he has a purpose in everything that he says to the to the press after practice and throughout the course of the week. Uh, he thinks very carefully about how he wants to answer certain questions, especially when it involves players, because he's very mindful of the message that's being sent to that player with every word that he says. And, you know, this is the era that we live in where social media and uh, obviously, and there are so many layers to that, by the way, people are well aware of their brand power and their name, image, and likeness. There's money to be made from all of this. There's also messaging that can be done through the press by a coach answering a question a certain way, which will get posted at a place like warchant.com, where I might add, if you have not become a member yet, you're really blowing it. You're missing out on greatness. Go to warchant.com, become a member of today. It's, it's you, can't, you can't miss. I mean, it's an, it's an A-plus team. Anyhow, the point would be, if you if you think about this, if you're Mike Norvell, you, you, you got to be smart about all this. You got to realize, like, man, I can't flippantly say something about a guy because in my generation, making an offhanded comment about a play or a player or a, an entire day of practice, or even a game, was just that. It was just a flippant comment. It didn't mean that much. It wasn't going to reverberate beyond the table or beyond the, the mic in the moment that I said it. Now it has a lasting impact because it goes straight to the websites that cover the program. It will go on their sites, their boards, their feeds. So that's Facebook, that's Twitter, that's Snapchat. It's all the things, right? Whatever the, the kids have. And then... If it's, you know, that'll be picked up on by all those outlets from there, it would be picked up on by national outlets. If it's salacious enough, if it moves the needle now, all of a sudden an offhanded comment where maybe you didn't mean much by what you said, you just casually answered a question without thinking about the way it would be portrayed or the way it would sound in a sound bite. 
comes back to haunt you. I mean, even even little things that you think, oh, that doesn't I don't think that's what he meant. I don't I don't think that that's what he was implying or even saying there. We've seen things like that get blown out of proportion time and again. It's very, very uh, part. It's very much part of, of the modern communication give and take for a coach to the media, to his players, his players back to the coach, all these messages that are sent. So when you see and this my, my larger point here is when you see a video clip sent out by FSU football of any kind, right? Production, seminal productions, all of it. It's awesome what they've done. It's cinematic. Those cinematic rewinds are incredible. We watch the games. It's like you're watching a documentary. It's unbelievable. But there's a purpose to all of it, and you can bet that Mike says yay or nay to whatever is going out. There's no like willy nilly. I mean, never again are you going to have the the embarrassing moment on social media that Florida State had uh, a few years back. We all know that one. I'm not going to relive it. That was that uh, was something. Anyhow, we're we're never going to see something like that again. I don't believe Nike Vapor product placement was very important at the time. <laughs> uh, clearly, it was extremely important at the time. Yeah, yeah. So I just think. When you see Jalen Lucas in slow motion catching the corner and, you know, kind of staying in bounds and going to the end, when there's a reason for that, there's a reason for everything you see, like you said, with Portier, I mean, this is affirmation. It's an opportunity when they, when they do these things, it's absolutely that. And I think it's smart. It's great. It, it does tell you once again, it's not 100% this way. There are older people who have figured it out and adapted very nicely but this is why you like your your coach to be younger, a little bit younger, a little bit hipper, a little bit wiser to the ways of communication and what these things mean and what it can bring about, the damage you can do, but also the way you can use it to uplift the player, confirm a player's status, change the overall opinion of um, you know a player, a play, a moment, a game, whatever it might be. And Mike's good at it. I think Mike does a good job with it. And that's the other part of, okay, you're talking about a social media post and a video they got to cut up and it has to be green lit. But then also, I mean, he knows nobody can come see the scrimmage. And this used to be after scrimmages, you would get Coach Norvell plus each of the coordinators. Now it's just you get coach, head coach. So he knows that whatever little, you know, crease, that whatever little opening he leaves in what he says, implies, says, and passing like we're going to run with that because we don't get to see the scrimmage. So if he says, oh, by the way, this guy was explosive. Like, okay, that is now a bullet point when everybody's trying to consume all this content. And one thing that I was really happy to see or hear him say was that the defensive line looked explosive. Specifically, he started with Marvin Jones Jr. and Lolo Hea as well. That is nice to hear. On a day that the offense makes some serious plays, big plays down the field, passing game looks good. It's nice to hear that Marvin Jones continues to look explosive because we see it with our eyes. Defensive coordinator Adam Fuller was ple- – we ran a long clip about that, had a segment about that last week. So he's impressed. He likes what he sees. Coach Norvell is willing to say the same thing, that he likes what he sees. This could be a great get for us at defensive end. I understand that there's going to be a battle with Sione, and Sione's an all-conference player, good player. But it's nice to hear that a wild card in Marvin Jones because there was no production there – is you're turning heads for all coaches involved. Well, and I'm biased. Um, I just want great players, so that's fine. But I also love Marvin Jones, and so I'm rooting for Marvin Jones Jr. because I want him to be something akin to what his dad was, which is my favorite player in FSU history. That's a uh, really tough standard to hold somebody to and completely unfair because you, you can't live up to what that guy was as a linebacker. But it's nice to see that the apple hasn't fallen too far from the tree in terms of size, athleticism, and now we're seeing some of that speed and want to. Yeah, man, it's it's exciting, the idea of uh, – that guy uh, becoming maybe what we thought he could be at some point. That, that's I'm looking forward to it. Chef Cameron Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV. TV. We'll continue, we'll continue in a moment. In a moment. 
Your local news now. A 28-year-old woman was killed Sunday afternoon in a boating accident, according to FWC. The fatal boating accident happened at about 5 p.m. at Lake Ammonia in Leon County, north of the capital city. The wreck involved two vessels, one of which was an airboat. FWC plans to release more details as investigators continue working the scene. It is unclear if anyone else was injured in the incident. This is a developing story. Yesterday, Leon County officials had to shut down portions of Capitol Circle between Woodville Highway to Crawfordville Road because of heavy smoke as emergency officials worked a wildfire in the area. The road closure was announced around 7.30 last night and reopened shortly before 10. LCSO will continue to monitor conditions and may shut the road again if necessary. This is Rachel and A with your Girl Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by McLemore Systems. Tell Hezzy's go to Mac Store. Check them out online at McLemoreSystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. 79 this afternoon under partly cloudy skies, southerly winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, 60. 80 tomorrow, partly cloudy. Low 80s Wednesday with a slight chance of rain showers. Chance of severe thunderstorms on Thursday, highs in the upper 70s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, it's 75 degrees. Have you been injured on I-10? I'm Dana Brooks of Facing Brooks Law Offices. We partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic camera footage along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Memories fade and witnesses disappear. Securing important video footage now can make sure your claim receives the full attention it deserves. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Facing Brooks, 850-777-7777. Offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. There is no Bigfoot, Eddie. Would you stop with that nonsense? There's a Bigfoot, Jeff. I wish there were. By the way, I don't want you to point to me as the guy that takes all the fun out of the room. I wish there was the Loch Ness Monster. I wish there was the Bigfoot. I wish there was the Chupacabra. I, all this, all the things. They're all mythical except for the Bigfoot. The Sasquatch. The Bigfoot? The Bigfoot. There's, actually, there's, there's big feet. There's lots of them. So, like, different... You know, breeds like different well, yeah, kinds. There's of, yeah. all, there's like you know families. There's yeah. different families. And, you so know, there's the there's if the, they're the, in the snow, you call them a Sasquatch or the Yeti, right? Yeah, and then the and, Yeti, then, Yeti, and Yeti. then here in Florida, that's a skunk ape. And you know, they're, but I've never heard that one. Yeah. By the way, why do you think it's real? We would have found them by now. They're the hide and seek champions of the world. <laughs> Nobody finds the Bigfoot. But I think you believe in Bigfoot. I do believe in Bigfoot. You don't believe. I Bigfoot. believe in Bigfoot. Don't I look, tell anybody you believe in Bigfoot. I would go look for Bigfoot, but he scares me. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the WarChant.com Multimedia Network. Check out WarChant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's WarChant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. I'm going to lobby for longer breaks, Tom. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> lobby for longer breaks now that I'm having to hit everything. <laughs> I've got, I'm an octopus in this thing. I got arms going every which way to Sunday right now. It's George Jetson, my man. It's George Jetson. <laughs> oh, one day at a time here. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Jeff, non-FSU fans seem skeptical that Mike can repeat a uh, 10-plus win performance despite the fact that he did it in 2022 with significantly less talent than he has in 2024. Why are they only comparing this team to last year and expecting a fall off below 2022? You know, I, I don't know the answer to the question with that people remain skeptical on Mike Norvell. I, I wonder if the source of that skepticism isn't twofold. A, from rivals. So if you read it from somebody who is, uh, you know, backing uh, either an ACC rival or an SEC rival, then you kind of just take that with a grain of salt. And then I think also um, the, the other side of it is probably the result of the Georgia game where some people take that game and think FSU really wasn't ready. FSU really wasn't what they appeared to be, that FSU really was a mirage. And they conveniently, because it was the last thing they saw, they forget two things. They forget all of the circumstances leading up to that game and 
They, they don't account for the devastating impact of having been absolutely screwed by a committee who arbitrarily decided to go against the rules that they had previously kind of guided themselves by. And then B, I think uh, that they don't account for that, but they also don't account for the fact that Mike has done it. Maybe they account for it, but they don't appreciate it. Mike has done it a different way. What Mike's done is different than really the powers that be, the, the, the kind of established year in and year out powers like in Ohio State, like in Alabama, like a Georgia. Those programs all built their dominance and their consistency through high school recruiting. Mike Norvell, and again, uh, necessity is the mother of invention, built this thing through the transfer portal. Uh, it, it's really not, you can't even argue it any other way. This has largely been built consistently through the transfer portal. And that is not the way that great programs and dominant programs over long periods of time have ever been built. But it's new. All of this is new. None of them in the past could have been built that way. The rules weren't in place for it. It didn't allow for it. Mike has taken full advantage and established something and done a better job of it than anybody else in the country, in my estimation. Uh, when you look at the sheer number of hits that they've gotten right with, uh, that is an, an alarming percentage if you are playing against Florida State. You're tired of watching player after player emerge and become better players than they were at their previous stop and, and take steps forward. But you know what else you're tired of? Because you were told it couldn't work. And I've been skeptical too. Cautious optimism, I guess, is a better way of describing it. You were also skeptical that they you could continue to do it in this manner and somehow the seeds of discontent were not sowed. That somehow these young men that are already within the program, especially if they were brought here via high school and they've worked hard and they've come into it and they're in year three now, that those players wouldn't be irate and absolutely uh, find it off-putting that their head coach then recruited over them with a junior or senior level transfer portal, right? That at some point that would rear its ugly head. That would cause infighting. There would be a breakdown in culture. There'd be a breakdown of the locker room cohesiveness. And of course, none of that's happened. None of that has happened. What you've seen instead is the ability of these players because of the way that they're vetted by Mike and the staff to come here and absolutely adjust Pretty rapidly, I might add. Um, I, I think the assimilation into the locker room by players outside of it that had established college football careers in places like Alabama, LSU, Georgia, South Carolina, Oregon State this offseason. You can keep going. It's West Virginia now, too, and Colorado State. We can keep going. I don't name, name everybody. But it's uh, it's been rather remarkable. It hasn't just been the guy who has something to prove that's coming from a smaller school that is taking a step up now and has one year to get it done, see Braden Fisk. It has been a variety of players that were either younger, that had played in a small school and gotten a taste of college football. Maybe they had a huge growth spurt. They got a lot stronger. Maybe they realized they weren't where they needed to be and they had an opportunity to see Jared Verse. There are other guys like that, but it really it spans the gamut. I think it runs the gamut of, guy, of types of players, and all of them, almost all of them, have come in here and been able to adjust to the way Florida State operates. And the way Florida State operates – has so far proven to be uh, in a manner that does not in any way elicit sort of that jealousy and that anger and that frustration that I was alluding to. It's amazing. It is. And, and I, I would, it's a good question from Briley because if you're talking about 2022's talent level and this year's talent level on the roster, it's not even close. Like it really is. Yeah. This year's roster has so much more talent than 2022 does. It has, it obviously it's got gobs more of depth. But I think the interesting part about that year and this year, and I don't know the answer to it. It's just a, a fact-finding mission, and, and we'll get to see what reports are out of spring camps and other places, transfer portal activity in other places. The schedule then versus the schedule now. You start with LSU. That's a headliner of a game, but it's the first game in Brian Kelly's tenure. And then you've got the three-game stretch in the middle of the season that we all circled and we all knew would be critical. It was we didn't win any one of those games. And then you went out against a bunch of backup quarterbacks. You look so much more impressive doing so. The process was cleaner, but that schedule was pretty easy and pretty doable. What is this one? I know it's laid out well, 
But in terms of level of difficulty, level of challenge, what is this schedule against 2022? I'd argue on its face, it's harder. Yeah. But, but this roster is better. You know, so it, that's a tough juggling act between the two. There's no doubt, though, that if a rival fan, Riley, or if a, maybe a disinterested observer who just likes college football but isn't really invested in Florida versus Florida State or Miami versus Florida State, if they seem to think that there's just a giant drop off in town and there's no replenishment, then they're not watching and they're not paying attention. This group is talented and it's really deep as well. Well, I think there's more talent running around on that field right now than they've ever had. This is this is Mike's uh, in terms of overall talent. Now, I'm not talking about experience combined with talent. I'm not talking about readiness to play big time college football and produce at the same level as certain other players that have left us that are going to be drafted uh, here real soon. But I'm saying in sheer numbers, I think there's more talent than he's had at any point, and that's because he continues to add layer upon layer. That stands to reason as you have success, the caliber of player that you're able to bring in improves both from a high school standpoint, but also even in the transfer portal, right? I mean, that's proven uh, time and again, if you're a deep, well, why is, why is Marvin Jones Jr. here? Right. I mean, Lola, those guys, they're all here because of the successes of the previous defensive ends that were churning out left and right. right. Uh, there, there are other reasons. There are other factors, but that that's primarily the reason it builds upon itself. It portends of more of the same. If you were bringing in players year over year and having marginal success doing so, and what was happening was frustration and average football being played to the tune of, say, you know, eight and four or seven and five, this would not be the destination it is. But you're winning games to go along with the vetting process that I talk about where they know uh, this kind of player may be somebody we need, but he's not going to fit in. So we're going to have to move on to a different guy. You have to marry all of the things together to have the kind of success that they've had. And that's why now when you're a player and you're looking at it, you go, do I want to go there? Well, I mean, track record says it's going to work out. And I'm going to win games. I'm going to be in a position to, to do good things. I do enjoy the comparison between this year and two years ago. Though. It's, it's an exercise I hadn't really thought of. And, and Danny in the chat asks, in the Heisen Leaker Law Firm chat, how do you compare the season's receiver group to 2022 with Micah, Pokey Wilson, and Johnny? If you could keep this 2024 group or trade it for 2022, which would you pick? And the funny part about that is Pokey is an unheralded player. Yeah. And, and, and the climb to where Florida State is going, Pokey was integral in that LSU game. He did score the first touchdown against Miami, and we never stopped. But that was the moment where you exhaled. You said everything's going to be okay. Pokey was more than just like an unheralded glue guy. He was a big-time player for us in that 2022 group. And if you needed explosive plays, you had Pokey. They missed him last year that element that he brought to the table. The speed. Yeah, they missed the over-the-top speed. Uh, that touchdown against Miami down there in Miami where it wasn't long before those fans emptied out of an already half-empty stadium because they knew we're on the wrong end of another ass-kicking the hands of their rival. But that particular throw and catch is one of the great ones. Uh, and, yeah, I did think about that from time to time last year, how much we missed him, uh, how much uh, his speed could have helped out this group. I will say – uh, I would like, I keep this 2024 receiving core over 2022. I, I, I'm going to, again, yeah, there's some things about the 2022s grouping that you like. Micah's toughness and willingness to block kind of set the tone for everybody else to block. That's true. Johnny Wilson, uh, everybody's going to want to, you know, have that size. You'd love to have six, seven somewhere in your receiving core again. But I just think there's, there's a, a larger crop of talent here than that group. And, and we'll see now. Does that translate into consistency in games? Does that translate to them being a, a better group by seasons in? We'll see. You got a lot of other factors there. You got a different quarterback throwing the ball. Uh, you know, you have a lot of new faces, period, a new offense for a lot of these guys. So it isn't the carryover from season to season that allows familiarity and comfort, you know, a comfort level uh, game days. I don't know how they're going to respond when the lights turn bright. I suspect because of the ability, uh, they'll, they'll figure it out pretty quickly. I think that receiver group in 22 was propped up to a degree by the ability to run the football and the fear of what Florida State could do running the football. That makes you better. It's like a, how a pass rush makes a, a defensive backfield look better because suddenly the quarterback is worried and he's got to get rid of the ball and there's urgency and he'll make mental mistakes and there it is. You're a chance for an interception. If your front four is garbage, you could have a great defensive backfield and you never know about it. It's part of the, the tug and the, the pull and push of football. 
I think this receiving core this year, I'm going to go out on a limb. I, I think you'd agree with me. I, I'm sure you do, in fact. This group, in terms of talent, can go make plays if the running game is lacking. I don't know that that group a couple of years ago would have been as productive as they were without counter, scaring the bejesus out of people, without Jordan's legs, scaring the hell out of people. That's that right. opened up a lot of things downfield for Pokey specifically and, and other shots that we took that we just didn't have last year. If you can run the ball better, that's great. This receiving core is going to be awesome. But I think this group, athletically speaking, could go make plays if it's on balance and, and, a, and a defense isn't afraid of our ability to run the football. I think they can go out and straight up make their own plays more than 2022. This has been an interesting uh, talking point for me in, in the way that I try to navigate it, to express it in the way that I want to so that people know where I'm coming from. I've, I've tried to be careful because I don't want to besmirch the careers of some of the guys that helped turn this whole thing around. But when I started the, the you know the off season with telling people I think this year's offense based on the people we brought in is going to be better, I knew that people would think that what reflected poorly on Jordan Travis, and I didn't mean it to be. Um, I think this running back room could be really really good, and some people may look at that and say, "Are you kind of taking a shot at Trey Benson?" Not really. I just think that the way he played it, it led to some electrifying moments without question, but I think there was a lack of consistency there, and I think that that can be. Uh, supplemented now by the the balance of the room. Uh, so my my thought is that you might be better throwing the ball this year than you were last year, and you might be better running the ball than you were uh, last year. And that's not a knock on the people who were throwing and running the ball last year. It's just it's just the way this group is made up right now. Right, and and in the last thirty seconds, I guess the short way to put it is, if you're more balanced, everything's going to look better because they they got to play you honest, and they didn't as much last year. Yeah, that, it's true. I, I, yes. Well, making a defense, Tom, defend the entirety of a field is is a big damn deal. And I have been saying this for a while. I didn't feel like second half of last season that they had to do that. It was very frustrating. And, you know, watching that second half. Now, a lot of that was the injury. Again, you had a lot of that. But to me, that th this team will force defenses to be more honest. I think you're right. And that changes uh, really everything. Hey, let me tell you about my friends at Tried and True Consulting, a Seminole-owned business that specializes in payments and business solutions. Tried and True's core expertise includes card, ACH, point of sale, mobile, e-commerce, and hosted payment solutions. Tried and True will help you reduce costs and increase your bottom line. That always sounds nice. Whether you're a retailer, restaurant, licensed professional, or service industry, Tried and True is saving you money. Tried and True's expertise extends to payroll, video menu ad boards, IT services, web design, and social media. It's time to make one call and tell the competition to take it on down the road. Call Don or Joe today at 844-464-6653. That's 844-464-6653. When you do business with Tried and True, they contribute 10% of the net revenue to the battle's end. So go Tried and True today. Call 844-464-6653. If you've been waiting and waiting for the perfect time to buy your new house, you'll be waiting forever. This is Shannon Young with Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, and I have been a mortgage lender for over 20 years. And I can tell you that there is no such thing as perfect timing. So take the first step towards your new home and let me show you what that really looks like. Chances are very high that you'll be very surprised at what I can help you do. When rates go low, prices go high, and that home that you've been eyeballing could be gone. If you're wondering how the drop in interest rates is going to affect your payment, give me a call. I'll be more than happy to show you all of the options available to get you into your new home. And for every single loan that we close for a fellow Noel, I will personally donate $250 per closing to the battle's end. Let's do this together and let's keep climbing. Call me today at 954-369-6171. That's 954-369-6171. Or you can find me online at loansfornoles.com. That's loansfornoles.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 373031. Barry knows good. He's keeping you comfortable. Barry knows good. Your heating and air conditioning system doesn't check with you before it takes a break. That's why we're always ready to help. Any day, any time, anywhere. And with our annual service agreement, there are no overtime charges ever. At Verno Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. There is no heating and air conditioning. 
There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. The latest betting odds and live movements from Vegas. This is your action update. Now, here are your latest lines from our guys in the desert. UConn laying seven against Purdue in the NCAA championship game at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona today. Prop bet on the board, first to 15. UConn minus 170, Purdue plus 135. Scotty Scheffler, 4 to 1 with the Masters at Augusta National. Rory McElroy, 10 to 1. John Rahm, 12 to 1. And Xander Shoffley, 18 to 1. Tampa Bay Rays at other 42 road favorite of the LA Angels today, plus 120, eight and a half under at Angel Stadium in Anaheim. It's the Atlanta Braves, the two dollar 18 cent home favorite against the New York Mets, plus 180, nine and a half under at Truist Park. Free betting splits available at vsin.com slash splits. For more sports betting news and information, go to vsin.com. Mike Sun at Real Talk 93.3. Timmy, everybody. Great job. Next up, we have Samantha. Ten times better performance can make a big difference. Castrol Edge motor oil gives your engine ten times better high temperature performance. Castrol Edge, better oil for maximum performance. Now through April 23rd, get a $15 gift card when you buy five or more quarts of Edge or Edge High Mileage Full Synthetic only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Claim based on Sequence 3 H test versus API SP test limits. Hey, Mark, remember, getting help from Progressive is so easy. You can use the mobile app, chat with us online, or call us. And you pick now to tell me. I couldn't miss little Grace's ballet recital. Oh, thanks for inviting me, by the way. Did I? Because you know I'm always here for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can use the mobile app if I need help. Sorry, you're in my wife's seat, though. Oh, yeah, I got it. Go anyway. <laughs> Tell Grace she nailed her chasse. Get the help you need from Progressive with her mobile app, online chat, or over the phone. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. Social Kitchen is now open on Cary Forest Parkway near Ology Northside, Tallahassee's only premier market where you can receive the famed Snake River Farm steaks and premier meats. Social Kitchen also has chef-prepared meals and sides ready to serve in just under 20 minutes. Perfect for those very busy springtime weeks, weekends, you name it. Hosting some people at the house. Hey, Social Kitchen also has build-your-own charcuterie boards and catering. Stop in and visit Social Kitchen today or visit us online at socialkitchentlh.com. Social Kitchen, TLH.com. This is Jamie McClunny with Trek Financial in Tallahassee. Despite the highest global interest rates in almost two decades, inverted yield curves, conflicts in the Middle East, and three of the largest bank failures in U.S. history, equities and bond markets have posted stellar returns for 2023. The Dow Jones, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000 all reached new highs as markets rallied on the expectations of Fed pauses, Fed easing, and Fed bank bailouts. Markets are going to do what markets are going to do, but a clearly defined risk management protocol can help to mitigate large drawdowns in your retirement nest day. If you're concerned where all this might be headed, call me at 850-900-5200 and let's talk about ways to mitigate the risk in your portfolio. Make Jamie your first call for that second opinion. Investment advisory services offered through Trek Financial LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 
three, two, one. If you're driving about town, listening on 93.3, appreciate you as well. And away we go. Oh, man, I had a perfect game going, and then I screwed it up. Adjusted nicely to it. Uh, just a base hit. Got the double play immediately after. But damn it, man. You know, the fun part about this show is uh, I'm, I'm kind of living in your world when there were tech concerns for remotes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go smoothly, but I can't do anything about it one way or the other going, going smoothly. But you, you're nailing it. It's, it's well, good. let me tell you. Let me tell you something's funny. I think, in a weird way, you liked that mini- miniature, that two-second mistake I made, because then you wanted to see how I handled it, yep, which was right. to calmly look over and go, "Oh, that thing's still up. I forgot to turn that off." Yeah. Well, I, right. I'm glad you didn't look at me in the screen because I was waving. I'm like, "Hey, hey, no, no, we got, we got an echo. We got an <laughs> no, echo." No, 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 no. I don't need to look at you. I'm problem solving up in here. Right. I got this. I'm like, okay, here's the problem. Got to hit this. Got that. Oh. We're fine. Here we go. The number one word in this show about what we aspire for and what we want to be about is response. And I just thought the response was excellent, excellent response. And that's what sets the tone for a successful second hour of a Monday program. Some might say the most important hour all week in in the JCS. For a lot of reasons, uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, First of all, uh, our friends at Zaxby's are all over this and we know that it's uh, incumbent upon us to make sure that you guys understand the love that Zaxby's has for the Jeff Cameron show and your taste buds. So go out there today and swing past one of the 74 Zaxby's here in town and get you some of the goodness of golden brown chicken with the Texas toast and the Zach sauce doing it up all brought to you by our friend Danny, who of course has been a golden chief booster for over 19 years. And now here he is collaborating with the Jeff Cameron show. This guy's taste no, no bounds. Lover of Florida State, lover of the JCS, you damn skippy he is. So do him right. Get you a big old platter today on your way home and say, honey, you're not cooking tonight because that's what your wife does. She cooks, but not tonight. (laughs) Kidding. Kind of. Get you some platters. They're delicious. Enjoy. Feast on the Zaxby's. All right. So that's why it's important. We start hour two the right way. We already touched on the scrimmage that was. The one thing I do wonder about, I always wonder about it, You hear Mike talk about the offense, taking a step forward, talked about certain players that stood out. He'll talk about the moments, how many plays they run, what the tempo was like, what he liked, what he didn't like, areas of concern, all that. But he's never going to tell you too much about who got banged up and who didn't. He'll talk about bumps and bruises and things like that, but you, you really don't know to what extent. And that might mean, and this would not be anything I'd be able to talk about when we go back to practice tomorrow. Uh, but you know, it might be a guy's going to miss the next two weeks, maybe miss the rest of spring. It could happen that way. And uh, that would be frustrating because you're trying to get everybody indoctrinated that needs to be. So we'll see. Uh, but it doesn't sound like there was anything catastrophic because that is one area that I will be uh, complimentary of. If a guy's, if a guy's going to be out for any extended period of time and he understands that it's a, maybe a high profile profile guy or a guy certainly that the media is going to pick up on, in essence, all he's ever said is, listen, let us get confirmation of what the situation's going to be and then talk to the family of that individual before I address it. You don't need to race to the uh, – I was sound like an old newspaper guy. Uh, you don't have to race to print, but you do need to uh, – you know, he, he understands that you, know, you go out to a practice and there's a, a guy missing that they're counting on, you're going to notice it. And if he's still missing two and three days later – at some point, it's going to get asked. Now, here's the best part. Mike's been the kind of coach that so far, frankly, if I wanted to or anybody else, not just me, I could walk right over to him right after he's done talking to the assembled press and say, hey, can I ask you something? And bring it up. And he'll tell you where he's at with that and why he's either not talked about it or doesn't want to talk about it or can't talk about it or will tomorrow, whatever it might be. Like that, those – that's so you know that I give you guys that kind of stuff for context. That's more about like, okay, 
what does this mean when a guy's out? Well, this means he falls in one of these categories, and this is Mike's rule on that. And I happen to agree with the rule, so I don't I don't break it because it doesn't seem silly. Some coaches have silly rules that I'll push back on, and Mike doesn't really have any of those. He really doesn't. That's it's refreshing. That's reasonable expectations. And the thing is that the the uh, access to the practice is what you know drives our passion because we get to see and tell you about Jalen Lucas before we see a clip in social media. Think about it if it was the other way and you had something like Jimbo's policy or or Willie's policy, which is minimal. If you see a clip of Jalen Lucas coming out of the scrimmage, you're like, yeah, so what? That dude's like the fourth or fifth best running back. Okay, whatever. But because we have access to a handful of practices before scrimmage number two, and we get to see what Jalen Lucas is in, in the settings of scrimmage uh, plays, uh, he's a Swiss Army knife of a weapon. When you see the clip, you say, oh, yeah, that's the guy we're talking about, everybody. That's the dude that you want to watch. And that's the context that we can bring. And so, you know, we've long been champions of, of Mike's way of seeing the world because we see it the same way, too. Uh, but you're right. It, the standard isn't too crazy. It's just that when the scrimmages happen, we have to mine for information, verification, those types of things. But by all accounts, whether on the record like Coach Norvell or off, better day for the offense, which is really good to hear. Best day of camp for DJU, which is great to hear because you need somebody to, to stabilize that situation. DJU was always going to be the starter, but it's nice for the roster to see that. And everybody goes, okay, that's why he's our starting quarterback. You know, I, I still can't – I think that's an area that I struggle with a little bit, and in, in some ways it doesn't make any sense. It's I'm inconsistent in my line of reasoning, and you know me, I, I like to define terms And when we have these conversations, and I can hear myself being contradictory sometimes on some of these these things, and this is what I mean. You know, I, I DJ, I think, will have his best year as a quarterback. I don't know how he couldn't. He's played a lot of college football now. He's been in a lot of systems. And Mike's a really good offensive coach. I think Mike deals with quarterbacks well. Uh, so I think that all leads to him having his best year. But what that looks like is harder to predict um, because he has some shortcomings in his game, or at least he did at Clemson, and he, has, he did at Oregon State. There's more to like than not. I'm not trying to paint a picture of a guy who's bad. I just think he has to get better. He has to be a little bit more consistent, especially in those easy intermediate throws that he misses too much of. Uh, and I, I got to imagine that he will do that. Um, but that's kind of the question mark I have. I, I'm glad to hear Mike talk about him uh, taking more ownership and, and looking better. Um, not that he's been bad. He's a guy who looks like uh, a, a guy who's learning a new system. He has a good day, then he has a bad day, then he has a really good day, and then he makes some throws that make you go, oh, my goodness gracious, that is a lot of talent in that arm. And other times you're like, I can't miss that one. He's wide open. And yet I'm the guy telling you that I think our offense is going to be more productive. And I think that our receiving core is deeper. And that I think our running back room is versatile and deep. And that I think all these, and it's weird because I, they kind of compete with one another. It's not the same as, you know, competing points of view can be true. It's just, it's a weird, interesting dynamic. I do think, um, when people ask what concern do I have, I have to get down in the weeds with some of this stuff. Cause I do, I am concerned about our tight ends ability to block and, and that's plural. And then I guess I would say I'm a little concerned that, you know, DJ could be inconsistent, but I, I don't, other than that, I think the offensive line's going to be better and I, they, there are options. Uh, you, you knock on wood, nobody else gets banged up the way that Destin Hill did. Um, if you, if you have, if it's status quo going into the fall with what we have right now, I feel all right. I feel very, very good about things. I can't wait to watch the spring game. Oddly enough, I, spring games. A lot of times I'm not a huge fan of, I love the event. I love, uh, you know, I've had great opportunities in, in my career in the spring game, whether it be being on the sidelines and calling plays and having fun that way, or interviewing coaches beforehand. I've done play by play, uh, with, for spring games from up in the booth before I've done a lot of things with them, but typically I don't like them because there aren't games. And a lot of times it's not really good representation of how any one segment's going to play. Coaches will try to divvy it up in weird ways and it just doesn't produce, um, the kind of information I'm looking for. I love gathering with friends and family. I love tailgating. Usually it's a beautiful afternoon inside a doke and all those things. But uh, 
you know, you don't get the information that you need. So, but this year I'm really looking forward to the spring game because of all the new faces and because of the new quarterback. Spring games are more entertaining when you have a roster with depth. If you don't have a roster with depth, they're not very entertaining because most of the time coaches want to put bubble wrap on that certain position group and say, well, I know what I got. It's a showcase maybe for freshmen. So you get the freshman showcase, but not. Yeah, not you'll find speed. Players. You'll see a guy where you're like, oh, that guy is unbelievable. Or, hey, man, can you believe so-and-so is that big or whatever? That, but that's about it. But depth and competition actually makes the spring showcase mean something. It's it's critical. It's critical in the evaluation process of where you are in the two deep. And that's what we're going to get. Yeah, I, I'm excited for it, too. I just if you are bullish, I think this is one to one. Tell me if you agree with this, but I think it's one to one. If you are bullish on this offense and its ability to be productive relative to last year, it's because you're saying you think they can establish the run with consistency the way that they want to, because at that point, DJ could be inconsistent with throws, but they're going to be there and they're going to be open because play action is a thing because the speed is there down the field that one false step with that cannon for an arm, you could make up for a missed throw on second and 10 that should have put you at third and two, but you missed the throw. Well, if you've got 75 yards in this arm and you can chuck it down the field and Jalen Lucas is wide open or Malik Benson's wide open, that erases mistakes. So that's like one part of it. But the other is if they can establish the run with consistency, that would lead to optimism about what this offense can be. Yeah, and I think they will because I think it made uh, Mike angry uh, that they couldn't do that last year. You know, I don't... I don't want to put words in coach's mouth. Like he just got done last hour describing how it is that Mike chooses his, you know, words carefully when talking about a player or set of circumstances. And so I don't, I don't like to insert words there, but I, I am paid to give an opinion and I do have the opinion uh, that I think they were a little frustrated at times last year with Trey. Uh, that my opinion is that I think he could, he, for all of uh, the dynamic ability and the wow factor that Trey Benson possessed at that size to run that speed is insane. For all of that, I do think that he didn't always see it, Tom. He just didn't always see it. And we forget about that a little bit because of the speed and the playmaking ability because of the explosiveness and like you, there's a play a game where you go, Oh my goodness. Very few people could do that. But the down to down consistency was not there last year. That's not all on Trey Benson, but some of it was, some of it was on the times in which Jordan made the wrong decision. Some of it was the offensive line and some of it was Trey who just didn't see it or had too much patience and couldn't find the right balance between hitting the hole and, and waiting for something to develop. It's very difficult to break down specifically why the running game didn't do as well. Like unless you're a coach or a scout, then you can speak to it specifically. But some of the numbers I saw to help reach a conclusion was again, when it was about getting to the line of scrimmage or past the line of scrimmage, we we're actually the exact same as we were the year prior. It was, Look like from the guards' perspective or the, or the tight ends, they didn't get downfield and they weren't better at blocking down the field. Uh, some of that might be because a defense is ready for counter and so they're taking different angles. Some of it might be that you miss Dylan Gibbons, and some of it might be that you know you miss uh, the tight end room that you had maybe the year before. Maybe it was they had a couple guys that they could count on when they really needed to execute GT counter that they could do that or GY counter that they could really do that. I think some of it also with Trey, they wanted his eyes to be in different places. David Johnson said it last year that he left hundreds of yards on the field with basic reads, basic ideas of getting downhill and trusting your speed. The Clemson game in 2022 was one example where he found a way to run himself into the ground when he could have scored a touchdown, an, <laughs> an explosive play of an extra 20, 30 yards, and he found a way to come be tackled and be brought to the ground. I think part of it was he was swimming. He was trying to think his way through what they were, the adjustments they wanted him to make, and he wasn't as natural. So uh, while I agree with you that, you know, it's all equal parts, with Trey, I, I think some of that was they tried to make him something that he was not from a vision standpoint. And we missed Trayshawn Ward. Trayshawn had the timing down like that. And the good thing is, uh, Coach Norvell said this on Saturday, that Lawrence Toafili looks just as explosive as he did last year with the added weight that he's better than he was last fall with the added weight. 
And that dude has a really good sense of timing and what is necessary. So you're talking about like an insurance policy. Maybe Roy Dell is better. Maybe Cam Davis is ready for prime time early and Jalen Lucas is explosive. But it's really nice to have Lawrence Toafili in this scheme, somebody who knows the feel for it inside and out. Lawrence is a, a guy that easily gets overlooked sometimes. I think it's because of the dynamic aspects I was alluding to to Trey Benson and other backs that have been here and how he's more of a, of a kind of a home run hitter, uh, not a down to down back. He can catch the ball. He can do a lot of things, kind of a Swiss army knife, kind of a player uh, early in his career. He was smallish. And so that that's the initial imprint people had of him was that he was going to struggle between the tackles. He's gotten better at that. I admit I'm guilty of overlooking him. Because if you ask me about the running back room, he's not the kid that I bring up right away. He's probably not. Well, I know he's not the second kid I bring up, and he's not the third kid I bring up. It doesn't mean he doesn't have a role. It doesn't mean he's not important. It doesn't mean he's not going to contribute in a good way with us. It doesn't mean that he's not all the things that we just described him as. It just means that like I'm much more excited by the down-to-down Roy Dell. The idea of Cam so looking at that body type is unbelievable. He's huge. Then you talk about a Jalen Lucas who's not really a true running back in the sense that he's kind of, uh, to me, he'll be more of a gadget guy and a special teams guy, but a guy that they're going to utilize. But he has a weapon that nobody else has. So everybody has this unique thing that excites me more. Uh, the Lawrence Toffoli, and it's unfair to him to some extent. But I, I, you know, you're right. I, when we bring up that room, I don't bring his name up. It's weird. I've I've been guilty of bringing up Kaziah Holmes more than I bring him up. Yeah, and and Coach said in, in his presser that he's been limited. Lawrence has, but he made his presence felt early in the scrimmage. So again, he's willing to give you a little nugget there of context that there's been some limitations on Lawrence. But that as somebody who was the MVP of the ACC championship game, he's even better than he was then, which you can look at that a couple of ways. There could be a, a bump and a bruise that they're trying to protect, or they like what they have in him enough that they know. So we'll we'll just let him do what he needs to do, and then let's evaluate what else we have and how to make this whole thing work. The great news is whatever our running game looks like, you're going to have at the top of the line a player that does one thing really, really well, speed, short yardage, Swiss Army variety, block, pass yes. protection. You've got a catching out of the backfield. You've got an answer for every little thing that you want out of the position in a way that you did not last year. By the way, friends, Social Kitchen has Masters packages for sale right now. It's Masters Week. I, for one, am pumped. Uh, people can purchase uh, these uh, Masters packages at socialkitchentlh.com. You can also just swing on by there off of Cary Forest. I know I do. And they'll help you order through their website. Uh, so this is a this is a big deal. Like let's you can pick this up, um, you know, this week and Thursday through Saturday. You can go just go check it out for yourself if you're in the area, off of Cary Forest, because I think you'll be pleased that you did. You'll see the selection of meats second to none. You also get a chance to talk to the uh, chef there. At the same time, uh, if you just wanted to order it, Social Kitchen TLH. Uh, dot com is where you would want to go. All right, Jeff Cameron Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. We'll continue in just a moment. You probably already know that Pinch a Penny Pools and Spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs, offering everything you need from chemicals, cleaners, vacuums, nets, and more. But that's not all. Pinch a Penny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs, hot tubs, paired with easy financing options making these luxury hot tubs affordable for everyone. And if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it, worry no more. Pinch a Penny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade-in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch a Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotSpring.com. That's TallahasseeHotSpring.com. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. 
I'm Robert, and I'm a general pest technician at Paul's Termite and Pest Control. I have a fantastic job working for an amazing company. Every day, I take great satisfaction in knowing the work I do helps protect the health of the customers I'm honored to serve and their pets, too. Many are now my friends. Paul's is a local North Florida-based company, and they are constantly teaching all of us techs about the ever-changing needs of our unique part of the world. I'm Jay, and having the privilege to work with people like Robert and all of our employees is truly an honor. There is no doubt that the staff of Paul's Termite and Pest Control is the best in our industry. All of our people are local, and local really does mean something. We're North Floridians. Our kids go to school here. We shop here. We build relationships here. And we honor our commitments. To all of our customers, thanks for trusting us to protect your family, pets, and home. For the elimination of termites, any other pests, and a greener lawn, too, call Paul's. We'll get them all. Power Mill Training Academy equips motivated athletes focused on baseball and softball with the specific tools to reach their true potential. Now, you'll read that if you go to their website, but I'm here to tell you that, look, whether it's your daughter wanting to play softball, your son wants to play baseball, or maybe they just want to have fun and get the most out of their abilities, and that's where Power Mill comes into play. They've got coaches and camps that teach for every level of play for your son or your daughter. To learn more, go to PowerMillSports.com. Get excited about your home design with Tallahassee Lighting and Decor, where you can discover an incredible selection of lighting fixtures, exceptional furniture, and unique decor for any style and any home. At Tallahassee Lighting and Decor, you'll get the chance to consult with one of our design representatives to curate the perfect space to fit your home and lifestyle. Visit Tallahassee Lighting and Decor today. Proud sponsor of Patty's Playhouse, Saturdays at 11 a.m. on Real Talk 93.3. Find out more at tallylighting.com. That's tally lighting.com we all want more energy more strength more results well welcome to orange theory fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today backed by science orange theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone spiking metabolism and increasing energy orange theory fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy visible toning and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours experience more vibrant life today with orange theory fitness to find out more go to orange theory the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. And we roll on Big River. As uh, I do want to make mention of our friends at Tried and True Consulting, came on board just a couple weeks ago, people getting good results there. Tried and True Consulting is a payments and business solutions company owned by fellow Knowles. As a Knowles business owner, they're committed to reducing costs and increasing your bottom line. Also give back 10% of their net revenue to the battle's end. That's good stuff. Hit the uh, trifecta today. You could scan that QR code that you'll see during breaks. We have it up for you. It's pretty prominent. There you go. If you're looking in the chat right there, scan that. Find out more about what I'm talking about. Or you can call alums, Don and Joe, 844-464-6653. So there you go. Tried and True Consulting. Good folks. Uh, I like working with them, and they do good work. And uh, I got a question in the chat that was, uh, was Marvin Jones Jr. still living up to the hype? Um yeah, yeah, no, he is. We talked about that some last hour. Appreciate that, Trey. He, he he's looked even better. I, I think there was some apprehension there uh, coming into uh, spring camp, just a just a kind of a mystery as to who he was, what he was. I mean, we know obviously the name, and I had high hopes that he would be uh, something special, but I wasn't sure that he would immediately stand out, and he has immediately stood out. So, and the coaches referenced him as well. So it's not as if it's just us. It's uh, it's Coach Norvell and others. Speaking about what he's bringing to the table, that group is going to be good. The defensive ends. Uh, I'm I'm interested to see the areas where I have legitimate concerns about. Uh, you know, like okay, I'll give you a good example. Last year, you know, that I talked at length, probably ad nauseum in the case for some of you, um, about the inconsistencies and frustrations I had certain aspects of linebacker play. That turned out to be better than I thought it was going to be largely because the two most consistent and valuable members of that linebacking core stayed healthy uh, for the most part. Now, late in the year, like everybody else, they were dealing with some things, but you know, you, you, but Tatum Bethune was, was healthy. He got healthy and he got, he actually got more healthy uh, in, by week three, four, five, and six. 
he started playing even more consistent, although he made such a big splash in the LSU game. Uh, Kalen Deloach, uh, you know, that speed returned. Remember, Tom, how it was kind of gone at the end of the previous year? We were like, what happened to this guy's speed? It's gone. Well, we found out he was dealing with some things, and he came back in, and he got faster. So they're just – my concerns were that they weren't great in coverage, and there wasn't a lot of depth. And Lundy was limited because he was just a, a run stopper, and I think he's still pretty much that. But we'll see. Um, I have less concerns at linebacker now. Uh, just because I'm really pleased with the steps that Cryer is taking. I, I really think he's been uh, very good in this camp and I'm going to trust Adam Fuller. And there's something I didn't know that we would all kind of maybe agree to do. Uh, but Adam Fuller kind of gets the benefit of the doubt right now. You know, he's telling us that he's seen real signs that Nicholson's come a long way and that he thinks he's on the precipice of something really good. Uh, he hasn't looked bad in camp. I don't see any indicators that he's taking a step back. I, however, have not seen the indicators that he's taking a huge step. But I'm not the defensive coordinator, and I don't see every second of every day, and I don't see these scrimmages. So, you know, again, I'm going to trust him that that's happening. He's always been good in coverage. So for for him to say that Nicholson is taking a big step forward means that he's he's doing well against the run when we're not around, you know? Yeah, that's the thing where you know Coach Fuller he can be blunt in in a refreshing way as a member of the media because you know he's not saying boy oh boy we really love Blake you know he can cover that eh, boy of anybody on this roster we Blake can cover right. what a player he'll say yeah you remember last year he was good at coverage but now he's good at the other stuff like he'll, yeah. he's willing right. to give you that he's like yeah I understand that maybe if we're looking for him to be a better player we need something different to be uh, present to have him get on the field. And he was talking about the physicality of inside run drill. He was talking about the physicality in the scrimmage. He was talking about keys, getting downhill, instincts, all the things that come with specialized play at the collegiate level. Because Blake played a ton of positions in high school. But now you're going to specialize and you've got to know uh, to the point where your instincts can take over and your athleticism can take over. College football is too fast. If you're thinking, especially at linebacker, it looks awful. And we had backups last year who were clearly thinking their way through certain situations. And it was apparent. Same thing with Kevin Knowles last year. And he was dealing with an injury himself. But you could tell that there was this extra tick. And that's all it takes where you're thinking and you're trying. And somebody's just going to run right by you. Or they're going to make you look foolish. Linebacker is one of the most lonely places or positions in the world, especially on defense, where if you make the wrong read, everybody knows it. And everybody can plainly see it. Hopefully they do cultivate more options. But you're right. Adam Fuller is... Uh, there are some kids that they want to protect. They don't want to give them praise and they don't want to raise criticisms because they worry about the kid's mental comportment. They must like it a lot if he's willing to give open praise after just a couple of weeks of spring of how Blake Nicholson's come along. That's, that's a great sign for us. We've got a question in the chat, the Heisen Lincoln Law Firm chat, which was, you know, basically, if you've got to hit something in the portal, what are you going to go hit? You know, I've got ideas that I, I think some of it, it's a fluid situation. We know that. Like, I don't know that a year ago they necessarily thought they were going to go grab a receiver after, you know, as late as they did. Think about when they grabbed him. But an opportunity arose, and Keon Coleman all of a sudden was available, and all you needed to do was look at tape and see what he was able to do with a ass-sorry quarterback at Michigan State. Um, so you, you know, you had a, a, an ass, sorry team with an ass, sorry quarterback, and he had all that production. So you're like, well, man, imagine if we put him with a guy that can actually play. Uh, and so they, they decided, screw it. Let's go get him. And it was the right, it was the right thing. Unfortunately, he got hurt pretty much halfway through the season and we didn't get a true Keon Coleman season. In my opinion, he's still good enough. He still made a lot of plays, still did some things that, uh, made you wow. And, and, and gosh, when he was especially healthy early, remember, hurdling guys on the sideline and just like unbelievable. We forget the highlight plays. I mean, we remember like all the touchdowns against LSU, and but there were all these wonderful moments where he ran away from people, jumped over people. He was able to outduel people in congested areas of the field for the football. He won the game against Clemson on the contested catch, right? When they had the opportunity to take advantage of the kid who had been subbed in for injury. And like all those things are big deals. And so I'm not saying he was worthless, but he was a half of what he was at the start of the season, by the end of the season. And it's a shame. Um, and that frustrated me to no end. And so they went and got that guy, and he made a big difference. 
but they had not planned on that. So I don't know. There'll probably be two or three guys that may become available that a lot of people will want that we can't predict right now. And you're going to go, well, you know, I don't think they had any desire to go out and get another offensive lineman, but this dude just came in the portal and is available and he started three years at Michigan. We should maybe take a look at it. You know, that kind of a thing. So there's that. Always keep that in mind. Um, I think right now, though, barring situations where there is an obvious, you know, like how could you pass up on this guy? Why? How could you not go grab Keon Coleman, right? Barring that, just those guys sitting in a room and saying, all right, look, man, we've seen it. We like this. A little concerned here. I think this will be fine. We don't need to do anything. I think this is fine. Now, they're factoring in a lot of things. They're factoring in ability. They're factoring in depth. They're factoring in scheme. They're factoring – the 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 fragility or not of the makeup of a room i mean well, they, they have know. to yeah right and how about eligibility it's not is it a one year guy or a multi year guy like so for example i was going to make a joke that said uh we're not going after a defensive end i think we're fine there but maybe you grab one if he's got 3 years of eligibility left and right. so on its right. face you read the headline and you say a defensive end why but you see that he's a redshirt sophomore and so you bring him into the fold that's another part of the math here is do we really need a, a one and done type player to help us get over the top at X position or Y position? If we've only got a, a certain amount of slots, I don't want to pass up on this guy. He's best player available. Now he won't play a ton this year, but man, he sets us up for success in 2025 and 2026. I will predict. And I think most of the time people want to hear like, okay, what are your thoughts? That what, what, what do you think they will do? I think it's highly likely they'll go out and get another defense tackle. I think it's at least one. I think just for depth purposes, we know that you have to win games in the trenches and you have to have beef there and you have to be able to rotate. It's a vicious, vicious trade <laughs> being in the trenches. I, I would, I think they'll go get one more. Uh, I would probably, I think they'd be open to the idea of if, if he's available, if there's a, an experienced proven Having done it in games at a high level, power five type thing, I think Tom they would go grab a tight end or a wide receiver, if not both. I think they would. Um, with the injury to Destin Hill, I think the I think they were counting on him to play a lot of snaps. I think they recognized that he was taking a big step forward. I think that if he's and we don't know yet because Mike hasn't talked about the extent, I'm going to make an assumption here that he's extremely limited, if not completely unavailable for the fall. If that's the case, then I think that you might do yourself uh, good in going out and getting a, a game proven receiver. If he's not there, then you're going to rely on what you have in camp. You have more than enough talent, more than enough bodies, just maybe some inexperience concerns at that position right now. Well, yeah. Hey, is Portier healthy at the end of this camp, feeling good about himself? It, has Akeem taken the next step? Uh, is, is Benson the guy that you thought he was going to be, uh, is Brown coming into form now as a guy that might take Destin Hills reps now that Destin's down. If all that's operating to peak efficiency, maybe you don't go out and get him, but I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I don't, I don't want to fall into the same trap as last year where I thought because Kentron owned the spring, Kentron was fantastic in spring and Johnny was Johnny. So you feel very good about where you're starting the conversation with those two players and Destin, what could he be? What else out of this group can you get for a four and a five in, in this receiver core? I thought that was enough. But they said, no, it's not. Keon Coleman is, makes us better. So we're going to go get Keon Coleman. Kentron had an excellent spring. We're very proud of the spring that he had. But <laughs> we're going to put him on line two of the depth chart, and we're going to put Keon Coleman on line one of the depth chart, and that's all well and good. Uh, prove it again, Kentron. And then obviously there were health concerns after that. So – I don't want to fall into that trap again, but this time around, I think the export market will have something to do with their approach at receiver. Correct. How aggressive they are. How many dudes leave? How many dudes three weeks from now have entered their name into the transfer portal and say, I might play at Florida State, but I know I'm going to play here for a, for a fact because they're telling me I'm going to, and I've only got one year to go or two years to go. So I think that would inform the receiver market. Tight end, I could see it. Defensive tackle, 100%. I don't, they don't need it right now. If everybody stays healthy, that's yeah, but not I, yeah. Of, that's not the case of defensive tackle. You can never no. assume that. No, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and get somebody. I think uh, I, I think 
without question, I'd go out and get somebody if it's available. And I got a guy that started somewhere like the Big Ten, or the, you know, or the old Pac-12 or the Big 12, any of these Power Five places. Not obviously, they had so much success with Braden Fisk. You don't have to be out of a Power Five, but Braden was kind of a unique set of circumstances. You know, a he was coming off an injury, and B, when you looked at the teams that were like really vying for his services, you're talking about big time programs. Notre Dame was our chief competition for Braden Fist. So you knew that a lot of people looked at that tape and said, that is a power five dude. That is quickness. That is size. That is intensity. That is all the things I want. He kind of felt like a plug and play guy coming from a smaller school. Other guys, when you look at the past and you look at a guy like here, Thomas coming in from South Carolina, who really improved his stock and elevated where he was, you loved his body type. You knew that he had been in the, in the wars in the sec. So you felt good about that transition because there was evidence of that. Um, there's just different ways that you view guys. I, I, if there's a power five guy out there that's had success and been consistent and he's available at the end of this spring, I'd go grab him. I'm not saying I wouldn't do that at linebacker as well. I feel, well, okay, fair. I threw that in in the end there. I see it. Yeah, just, um, uh, I feel the the about Lolo Haya the way I felt about Kier Thomas. They're not the same body type. They're not yeah. the exact same Solid, player. Won't be flashy. Can trust them. Is right. impacting the game more than people will realize because it's all kind of understated in terms of stats. Yes, in terms of impact, I feel very similarly. You know what you're getting, and mm-hmm. and if you want to do the floor ceiling thing, high floor player, high floor stabilizes that group. I think there's a fun debate to uh, to be had here in the near future about it's third and two. What do you do at edge? You got four down linemen, two edge out there. Who are your two guys? Because I think Sione has to be one of those players out there in this in that situation. But Peyton's well, you're really not pulling Patrick Peyton off the field these days. So well, you tell me you're pulling Marvin. You pull, yeah. That's this is the hard part. And then you could also make an argument that if it's third and two and it's a run first team, that maybe Durajaye is out there and maybe he's playing edge because you need it's um it's a fun conversation to be had. And the the, the fun part about it too is. Kier is like Sione. Can Marvin be like Jermaine? Because Ooh, Jermaine was not proven at that level when he got here. Marvin is Marvin's getting a lot of run. A lot of people talking about Marvin. And that's great to hear because I saw a little bit of it in my one day. But when you hear the coaches saying that, again, it's important. They're choosing their words very carefully. Marvin, um, listen, nobody wowed me in person the first chance I had to talk to and stand next to um, like Jermaine Johnson did. Jermaine wowed me in a way that I was just like, look at this guy. This is a specimen. This is a guy that if he plays anything like he looks, we've got us a a stud. Uh, And it it turned out that way. Maybe Marvin does. Maybe Marvin does. And that would be absolutely huge. Chef Cameron show 93.3 real talk radio war chant TV continue in a moment. Your local news now. A person was shot in West Tallahassee Sunday evening. The shooting happened just after 6.30 p.m. at the Red Point Tallahassee apartment complex in the 2600 block of Mission Road. The injured person is expected to survive. A large police presence was focused on the pool area at the apartment complex. Multiple TFD vehicles and forensic vans responded near the pool. A yellow crime scene tape roped off the entrance to the pool deck. Neighbors said that there are frequently big parties at the pool area. It's unclear what circumstances led to the shooting. The details on those involved or if any suspects have been arrested. This is an ongoing investigation. The Tallahassee Bike Fest begins this week on the 11th and runs through the 14th. This family-friendly event is free and includes activities for both riders and non-riders. The Tallahassee Bike Fest is at Appalachia Regional Park. Admission is free. There will be vendors, bands, and, of course, lots of bikes. For more information, head to tallybikefest.com. This is Rachel Anae with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update. Brought to you by McNamore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at mcnamoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. 79 this afternoon under partly cloudy skies, southerly winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, 60. 80 tomorrow, partly cloudy. Low 80s Wednesday with a slight chance of rain showers. Chance of severe thunderstorms on Thursday, highs in the upper 70s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently, it's 77 degrees. Tallahassee Music and Bike Fest is back from April 11th to the 14th at Appalachie Regional Park. 
Scheduled events include daily live music, e-bike tracks for kids, Harley Davidson demos, sound competitions, full throttle bike show, and countless vendors and activities. The event is free and open to the public with proceeds from raffles and beer sales donated to Honor Flight Tallahassee. Check out the full music and event schedule at tallybikefest.com. That's tallybikefest.com. haven't seen this guy since what was it oh shoot you two at the spear in las vegas baby hey how about that man wasn't that fun good show good show everything about it nearly perfect nearly perfect i had everything i could possibly want i wanted one thing couldn't find it and i looked everywhere no cubans what do you mean there no was cubans there was cubans no i didn't see any cubans dude no. i'm sure there was cubans there i mean no. you know no i walked around there was a moment right before the show i thought gotta find some cubans nothing Dude, there's Cubans. There was Cubans. I'm sure there was Cubans. In Las Vegas? In Las Vegas. No Cubans in Vegas. There's Cubans in Vegas, man. Eddie, there were no Cubans. Chef. The sandwich. There were no Cuban sandwiches. You're Cuban. Of course I know there were Cubans there. Oh, the sandwich. Yeah, no, there probably wasn't many there in Vegas. No Cubans. No, not yet. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Yeah, back to me. <laughs> uh, it's just fun to say because I'm right there by the button when he's done. Yeah. I can just go ahead and talk if i want to uh maybe i can get that guy to, the voiceover guy to say yeah just so you can hit a yeah button and you guys go yeah back and forth yeah yeah he yeah. and i we could have a woo off like rick flair and the guy that imitated rick flair yeah 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 over and over again pinch of pity pools and spas have everything you need for pool maintenance chemicals cleaners pumps vacuums nets covers you name it they got it here's the deal I'm going to skip all of it. I'm going to let you know. If you got an old tub beat up, needs to be replaced, tired of looking at it, you know you don't have the wherewithal to get rid of the said tub, you don't have the means, you don't have the know-how, you don't have the transportation, then our friends at Pitch a Penny will come pick it up. They'll replace it with a new tub for you. They'll give you uh, a rebate on said tub because of uh, the value of your old tub. There you go. They make it easy for you. They'll haul it away. Pinch of Penny Pools and Spas. If you're ready to relax, then uh, they're ready to show you how. Pinch of Penny Pools and Spas. You can find them off of Greer Street. And there he is. Ah, I just looked up and saw the otter. You know what changes today, too, uh, is unfortunately Probables kind of gets maybe not the axe, but it's a little bit different. We're going to have it ready for you from here on out. Tom and I will probably set it to music in the mornings. Probably will stay the same. They did pretty much stay the same. So we'll have to do that moving forward now that so this is a hodgepodge deal where director Matthew will be here sometimes. I will be here sometimes. One day a week, it might be a um a, a pre-record from the house. It's just a lot of things, man. It's the way we had to do it. Some things were changing, and that's the way it works. So uh, but you'll get me. I'm right here. I'm right here, and I'm doing this, and Tom will be right here. So we're we're gonna be all right. Well, and on Wednesday and Thursday, we're in studio. Old Looking forward to that. Yeah, old school there. I could just let my hair down. That's right. Let your hair yeah. down. Let yeah. me worry about the doohickeys. I'll be you worried press about all the buttons and all the filing and all that. I'll just go in there and be me and do a show. I'll probably be bragging about the Pittsburgh Pirates who are now eight and two. And, you know, we mm -hmm. didn't have a chance to have Irish Chappell on the program uh, today because because I had too many things to worry about. I had all this. But here's the good news. I'm going to be with him tonight at 7 o'clock for the Monday Smash. Old school, original lineup, the OGs. Jeff and Ira get together tonight for the Monday Smash, 7 o'clock on War Chant TV. And uh, thank our friends, uh, State Farm, Russ Voorhees, you know, stepping yeah. in there. Gonna he be, also uh, sponsored some of the tournament this year as well. He was a high-level sponsor, State Farm agent Russ Voorhees. That's who the fighters. hell Russ is, by the way. He's uh, dedicated, loyal. Uh, smart, hardworking kind of guy you want to reach out and call. He will be sponsoring uh, an element that day on Friday, the long drive, which I think is apropos. Russ is a large dude. If he was closest, 
closest to the pin or, or the putting contest. No, nah, man, Russ is about the long drive. So that'll be on hole number seven, on um, hole number seven Friday. Guy looks like a starting right tackle in the NFL. He does. He's, uh, no, he's, he's a monster. Uh, but he's just a, a kind-hearted monster. Listening to us over in uh, Jacksonville right now, I, I'm sure of it. Uh, did you glance out the window and and see the eclipse there, Tom? Are you looking at it? You seeing how this is playing out? I know everybody's excited about the eclipse. So it's going for a while. Uh, I had a couple of people in their backyards wandering around like, it looks foolish out of context. What are you doing? <laughs> sipping on it, what, what appears some sipping on some strong beverages at for two. Oh, they made, they made a holiday out of it. I think they made an eclipse holiday out of it. It got very gloomy here. I haven't uh, done the whole put the glasses on and look out there yet. I know that I missed the peak, but it's still going for another forty five minutes to an hour, right? So I think I, I yeah, I, I haven't. I'm in this uh, you know dark studio. I haven't had a chance to kind of do it yet. I'll leave here in a little while and I'll go out there and I'll see what I need to see. Um, but I, you know, I got to be honest with you, even though I understand the, the magnitude of, the, of such things and, and you can read into it and go, oh, it's amazing. And eh, eh, didn't do anything. I don't care. It was I, cool. The one that was at the I old, was old kid, I remember that everybody got so excited. Like, oh, it's going to be amazing. This is unlike any other that we've had before. They say it every time. Every, well, this is, this will never happen again. The earth won't be here the next time this happens. They're like, they're like, okay. You told me that when I was in third grade and in seventh and when I was 16 and again, later. Eh. we had the one in the last 10 years that was at the old uh, ESPN studios and the way it was really cool. Cause the way that the light went through the bushes onto the concrete surface, you saw that it had basically oh, yeah. the, reflection the, the flickering, the reflections. Those were cool. Like many eclipses themselves, you know, yeah. like little evidence of that. That was fun. I'm yeah, sure this one is like seconds. that. Hmm? For about 30 seconds. Yeah. You're like, oh. You, you, you went, oh, that's neat. All right. Yeah. What you guys doing for dinner? Man, I, I don't need another giant earth event. We just had an earthquake on Friday. I don't need anything more. Earthquakes, eclipses. I get it. We're small. We don't matter. None of this matters at all. Right. I get it. <laughs> but how are the Knolls going to do that's right. in Ireland, damn it? That's what matters. <laughs> I haven't spoken a word of Purdue UConn yet because I have made the assumption that UConn is going to stomp Purdue in the same way that they've stomped everybody else's ass. And I've watched all along. Uh, I've enjoyed, you know, watching the tournament, but I just, it's only six and a half. I'm laying the six and a half. I hope that, you know, somehow Edie makes it close. Somehow it's interesting, but it, don't you get a sense that this is kind of a foregone conclusion? Uh, probably. Yeah. I, I, UConn is a juggernaut. It feels like, uh, the Nova team from, uh, not that long ago where everybody was playing for second. Uh, for me, I've been a bit of a broken record on this, but the, the home stretch in the uh, wild card, wild card position two in the Eastern playoffs for the NHL is riveting stuff. It's changing by the minute. Pittsburgh has come out of nowhere. The Islanders came from the cellar and now they're in a position to make the playoffs. It's crazy what's going on in hockey, and then baseball has just been fantastic, whether it's Knowles baseball or professional baseball. I'm loving baseball so much that yesterday, as I'm watching the Knowles on one screen and the Mets on another, I did pull up the ninth inning of a 2-1 ball game in Pittsburgh just to see how it would end, and I saw something that made you very happy, which was a two-run bottom of the ninth, so Pittsburgh wins the series over Baltimore, and they just yep. keep on rolling. Won the series in the same way they've won every series they've played this year, and uh, it's been it's been exciting, riveting. The series that we had with Baltimore was awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Ira and I texted each other back and forth. We we're going to try to get together, uh, but I didn't get a chance this weekend. I was off doing some things. Went to St. Mark's, by the way. Had a good time. It was all good. The fourth there is amazing. Um, and yeah, but so but I watched and I saw the games, and yeah, I mean, I get it. We're not going to win every extra inning game we play, but we have so far this year, all of them which is nice, which is nice. And so uh, I can celebrate as I did a little bit last year in the early going. We'll see if anything else happens. It was also fun yesterday to watch the University of Florida lose a two-run lead in the ninth and get walked off, walked off on and swept, uh, just like it was fun to watch Duke sweep Miami. I do think that Duke baseball team is very, very good, by the way, as we continue to assess where Florida State's at. Tomorrow is the game against uh, Florida, and, and they'll be uh, hopping mad. They're, they're going to be an angry bunch. And I suspect uh, trying to avoid a sweep in the season series, uh, you'll get an intensely focused group. But you know what? We're really good. And we responded in this series. 
And that atmosphere at Hauser tomorrow is going to be akin to some of the great atmospheres we ever had over there. I do think this team has been embraced and beloved, and people have this eagerness and willingness to go back out to the ballpark because it's like the olden days, man. It is. Well, for a lot of reasons. Like for me, Thursday, we're covering practice. And then as soon as practice is over, walking up the stairs to Hauser, and I'll sit in the press box for a little bit, do some work, and watch our team play Miami. That's a nice one two punch. Yeah, for yeah. for a Thursday afternoon. Plus, you're going to have Masters highlights on while all that's going too. Like this is um, this is setting up to be quite the sports week. But I think you can do it. You could put mission accomplished banners on battleships and stand in front of them and take photos. <laughs> Baseball is fixed. Baseball is fixed. Like uh, it wasn't that long ago that you were as diehard as you ever were about baseball, and I was waffling. It the games took too long. It's two to one. How does a two to one ball game go three hours and 45 minutes? Like it's, yeah. it is yeah. just, there's nothing happening. I'm okay with a pitcher's duel. If it happens in two hours, 45 minutes, it's the way it's supposed to go. But professional baseball is fixed. I'm tuning into more games that mean nothing to me than I have since I was a kid in terms of my own team. College baseball is fixed. It still takes forever because we'll, we'll club 15 runs out there. That's what the Florida State does. And there's a ton more pitching changes but it's way faster. It resembles the professional game way more than it ever has. Baseball in general is just in such a better place and it's so much more watchable. And this week at Hauser, we get four, I mean, 12 out of 10 energy games. Yo, huge, huge energy games. And I, I'm going to say that I think, you know, I, that baseball is the sport that when I talk about some of my favorite days in the early nineties at FSU, it's, it's being over there at Hauser and then watching those teams. But uh, yeah, the product itself was fading fast and, and becoming problematic. At the same time, the program was beginning to dip. And so though the, the confluence of those things made it so that you watch the cl- crowds dwindle. And I don't like to be the guy that is like, oh, things were so much better back when, but they were so much better back when. And you could sense it and feel it. And you really wondered what the path out was, especially since you'd gotten passed over uh, by a program, you know, two hours from you and, and it made you sick to your stomach and you watched it play out in the manner that it did. But listen, you're right to say it. I think it is fixed. I think, I think Link Jarrett, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to tell you they're going to win the college world series this year. They might. I did place a bet on him to go to the college world series this <laughs> oh, year before the yeah. season started. To be clear, I was talking about the sport in general, but yes, Link, yeah, may, have just, Link may have fixed it. Uh, I, you know, I think he did. I think he did. Yeah, I, I think he did. I think, and look now, what happens? Just like with Mike Norvell, what happens in a situation like this is that you end up changing the way you're viewed by the most important people, which is, of course, the players that want to come play for you. And so, the influx of immense talent out of the high school ranks as well as transfer market is something that is a very real thing. We're out of here. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Be good, everybody. Peace.